Well, good evening, friends. Thanks for joining us for another Wednesday night worship service. I'm glad that you've made the choice to tune in and be with us tonight. In just a moment, the worship team is going to come out and lead us in some songs of praise and worship. I'd encourage you, as I always do, to sing along with them, to allow yourself to enter into a time of, of worship right where you are, uh, where you're watching tonight. And then uh, as they wrap up in just a few minutes, I'll be back. We're going to be looking into a study from Jeremiah 38 tonight. Um, talking about six reminders from Jeremiah that good character always prevails. We'll be looking into Jeremiah 38, but let's worship the Lord first. Praise God. There is no fear, cause I believe. There is no fear, cause I Thank you. 
you enjoyed at that time of worship that you entered in and just found yourself in the presence of the Lord. So we're looking at Jeremiah 38 tonight, just kind of talking through a story, <coughs> excuse me, that's, that's recorded there for us. When we watch the news or scroll through our social media accounts, it can quickly seem as though good moral character is in short supply in our world today. 
Additionally, as Christians, we may find ourselves in situations where we are condemned or punished or made fun of because of our beliefs. Each day our character is tested. Often our true character comes out during times of testing and stress. We can choose to have faith, be courageous and kind, or we can choose to give in to the pressures of the situation and act cowardly and prideful. We can see examples of these different character trait reactions in the book of Jeremiah and the story of what I'd call the muddy cistern. Before we jump into that study though, we, we should probably answer the question that asks, who is Jeremiah? Well, Jeremiah was one of the Old Testament prophets and he ministered for 40 years under Judah's last five kings. The last king, Zedekiah, had Jeremiah thrown into a muddy cistern at the request of his officials, or princes, as it would say in the, in the scriptures. These guys didn't like Jeremiah's predictions, his prophecy of Judah's fall to the Babylon Empire. So they requested that Zedekiah have the prophet put to death. King Zedekiah, who had previously sought out Jeremiah's words from the Lord, he failed to heed them and he allowed his officials to do as they pleased with a little caveat. They weren't gonna literally kill him, they were just gonna throw him into the cistern. Jeremiah was lowered into this deep well known as a cistern, which according to Jeremiah 38, six, had no water in it, but only mud. And Jeremiah sank down into that mud. Jeremiah was God's prophet, and he would have died there if, he had not been, if it hadn't been for the courage of another official named Ebed Melech. He appealed to the king for Jeremiah's release. Then the king commanded Ebed Melech to take 30 men with him and rescue Jeremiah. Ebed Melech did so, and Jeremiah was set free. The lessons from this story, well, the truth is they have nothing to do with cisterns or mud. They lie in the timeless lessons about character that we can learn from those who are involved. Jeremiah, King Zedekiah, the princes demanding the prophet's death, and most significantly, the incredible heroic actions of Ebed Melech. So let's move into looking at these six lessons we'll learn from this account. Number one, it, we must be obedient to God even when it's difficult. Jeremiah's life was entirely about obedience to God. Though his message of repentance to Judah landed on deaf ears for decades, he did not ever give up. Even after being thrown into a muddy cistern for prophesying the fall of Judah to Babylon, he spoke the truth of God all the way through his life. Jeremiah was not successful in saving Judah, but he did escape himself being killed by the Babylonians, and he ended up being treated with respect by the Babylonians. Though Jeremiah's life was never ever easy, and honestly, it doesn't have a happy ending in earthly terms, he never stopped being obedient to God. As I've said for many years, the best measure of success for our lives is obedience to God. You wanna know how successful you are? Look and judge for yourself how, how obedient to God you are. As believers, like Jeremiah, we are called to the same unwavering obedience to God, no matter what the circumstances are. Jeremiah ministered during time of false prophets. The people of Judah, and especially their leaders, they liked, they loved the false prophets because they preached only good news. But this didn't keep Jeremiah from preaching the message of repentance that God had given him to preach. Like Jeremiah, you and I, we're not on earth to win a popularity contest. We're here to live by and speak of God's truth, even when it's not trending on social media or well received by our friends, and even if we find ourselves in a muddy pit one day. Lesson number two, cowardice leads to self-destruction. King Zedekiah's cowardice, his fear, is revealed in several ways. One is his inability to stand up to his own people. He gave, he gave in under public pressure when he allowed Jeremiah to be thrown into that muddy cistern. He would not stand up to those in his court who wanted to destroy the prophet. When Ebed Melech came pleading for, for Jeremiah's life, his plea convinced Zedekiah that Jeremiah should be released from the cistern. The king ordered 30 men to go with him. 
It's not really clear why he ordered such a large number of men to accompany this official, but my best guess is it was to make sure there was enough muscle power to stand against any opposition they may face in their task, opposition from the very same men that Zedekiah had already yielded to earlier in allowing Jeremiah to be thrown in the pit. What country could possibly stand when it's led by a man who doesn't even know what he stands for? Giving in to peer pressure led to injustice and ultimately despair for their entire country. King Zedekiah's cowardice also shows up in his fear of ridicule. He would not heed Jeremiah's advice to flee to Babylon because he was afraid how the exiled Jews that were already there would mock him. And even though Jeremiah reassured him that he would be much better off in the long run by fleeing to Babylon, he refused to heed the prophet's advice and enter into an unknown situation. And because he didn't do as God through Jeremiah said, Zedekiah would end up being ridiculed for being misled by the false prophets. He would be the only one ultimately who ended up with his feet figuratively it sunk in the mud and there would be no escape for, Jer for, for Zedekiah. Friends, we, we just cannot allow, follow God halfway or only when it's convenient. If we waffle under pressure or only heed God's commands when they fit into our lifestyle, we're essentially living under the influence of fear. Our fear is often grounded in the belief that God is not enough for us or that what he has in store for us won't be enough either. We want to control our own situation. We want, to, we want comfort and the approval of others. Giving in to our fears may make us feel better in the moment, but the result can be and often is disastrous and we have, and will have eternal consequences. Lesson number three, pride comes before the fall. Now I can't tell you how many times I heard that point as I was growing up. My parents would say that to me every time I would start bragging in front of my sisters or my younger brother. Brad, be careful, pride comes before the fall. Anyway, back to our story. The king's princes, his court, if you will, they didn't believe Jeremiah's warning about Babylon simply because it went against what they already thought or believed to be true. They didn't think Jerusalem would ever be overtaken by Babylon. And furthermore, they didn't want Jeremiah's words to somehow discourage the people or the soldiers. They couldn't hear God's truth because they clung so steadfastly to their own beliefs and desires. The princes, their unwillingness to see the city's vulnerability and to humble themselves led not only to the unjust treatment of Jeremiah, but also to the fall of their nation. Friends, pride is one of the most difficult sins to see in ourselves. Admitting we're wrong and that we need to take a different course of action, well, that requires humility, which is the opposite of pride. God's word warns against pride throughout the Old and New Testaments. In passages like Proverbs 16, 18 and 1 John 2, 16, God warns us of the dangers of pride. It leads to self-destruction and it keeps us from being led by the Holy Spirit. Lesson number four, justice requires courage. To better understand the significance of Ebed-Melech's role in the muddy cistern, we need to learn a little bit more about who he was. Ebed-Melech was an African official in Zedekiah's court. The name Ebed-Melech, don't you just love saying that? means king's slave in the Hebrew language and may have been a title for a man instead of a proper name. We're not really sure. Some believe that he was a eunuch and probably looked after, the king, after King Zedekiah's harem. Others believe that he was some high-ranking official. But whatever the details of his position were, two things are certain. One, he was a foreigner, and two, he risked his career and possibly his own life by petitioning the king while he was holding court in a public place. Evan Melek not only saw the cruel injustice that was done to Jeremiah, he also took heroic actions to remedy that situation. The possible risk to his own life didn't stop him. Fear of what the princes would say or do didn't stop him. His petition to the king was earnest, it was simple, and it was effective. 
Sometimes we see injustice, but we're afraid to speak up because no one else is speaking up. Or because we fear repercussions to our own reputation, comfort, and safety. When we see an injustice, friends, we would do well to be more like Ebed Melech, who didn't let fear stop him from pursuing the rescue of Jeremiah. Number five, no matter who or where we are, God can use us if we let him. God can use us if we'll let him. Jeremiah was a Jewish prophet. The message God gave him to share was for the Jews to repent and save. Yet the man of God that, that God used to save Jeremiah was not a Jew, and by the law of the time, he was not even eligible to be under the covenant of God. It's not clear whether Jeremiah had a friendship of some sort with this Ebed Melech, but it would certainly seem that Jeremiah had at least made an impression on this man. I believe we can safely assume that Ebed Melech believed in the God of the Jews because before the Babylonians broke down the walls of Jerusalem and set the city on fire and just tore it apart, Jeremiah gives Ebed Melech a message from God. This is what it says. He said, but I will save you on that day, declares the Lord, and you will not be handed over to the men of whom you are afraid, for I will assuredly rescue you, and you will not fall by the sword, but you will have your own life as plunder, because you have trusted in me. Wow, because you have trusted in me, declares the Lord. That's Jeremiah 39, verse 17. Since we can't be certain of Ebed Melech's exact position within the king's court, we don't know if he was there by choice, but what we do know is that God used his position, even if it was a low one, for God's purposes. Ebed Melech followed the prompting of his heart, his conscience, really of the Holy Spirit, and he took courageous action. His part in this story should remind us that God can use anyone even us, even me or you, if we will just let him. Number six, we're getting close to the end. Number six, acts of kindness should be done in a kind manner. I've got to remember this myself at times. Though Ebed Melech was quick to take action in his appeal to the king, he was intentional and thoughtful about how he carried out the rescuing of Jeremiah. The prophet was undoubtedly already weak with hunger and thirst. He was probably not adequately clothed, and in, but so instead of rushing to the pit with nothing more than a rough rope, Ebed Melech went to the palace to get some old clothes, some old rags and worn out clothes, and then he lowered those down to Jeremiah with the rope. And then he instructed Jeremiah to put the rags under his arms as so as to pad himself from the ropes. This kind action spared Jeremiah from being injured by the ropes as he was being pulled out of that muddy cistern. I imagine it also made Jeremiah feel not only grateful for his res rescue, but genuinely loved by Ebed Melech, who was rescuing him. Sometimes I find in our good intentions to help others that we fail to see how our actions may actually cause harm to them or simply make them feel uncomfortable or disrespected. How good is it to mow a neighbor's lawn if we destroy their flower bed in the process? Or what does it show the hungry if during a food drive we only give the items that we really don't like or that are the least expensive of all, rather than giving away something that we would enjoy eating at our house? The truth is, if we don't plan out our course of action, even if it's with good intentions, the good work we do, well, it might overshadow, be overshadowed by the harm that we cause. Even if the extra bit of thought doesn't change the final result, it shows the one that we are helping that we, are, that we genuinely care about them. And it demonstrates that we aren't performing a good deed because we want applause, but because of love. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 3 gives us a great reminder of this as it says this, And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor... Or I surrender my body to be burned, but I do not have love. It profits me nothing. Over the years, I'm confident many of us have found ourselves in difficult situations, probably even more so in this last year. We may have felt at times that we were in our own muddy pit. In those moments, we can despair, be fearful and give up, 
or we can trust in God and choose to let the experience build our faith and our character. The story that we looked at tonight, this muddy cistern story, shows us that those who follow God and act with courage and kindness will fare far better than those who are led by cowardice and pride. By following the examples of men like Jeremiah and Ebed Melech, we can remain faithful to God and help each other through the difficult seasons of life. And, and so we wrap this thing up with that thought. We wrap it up with that thought that, that if, we would, if we will act like and let the character traits of Jeremiah or Ebed Melek come flowing out of us, if we would develop those character traits in our own lives, that there may be someone near us, it could be a relative, it could be a friend, a coworker, a classmate, that we could help through a difficult season. And it may be that, that we find ourselves in our own difficult season someday, and we're gonna hope and pray that someone like Jeremiah or someone like Ebed Melek with those character traits will come along to be our source of strength and rescue us in the midst of us, in the midst of our difficult situation. Maybe you're in a difficult situation tonight. I wanna to pray for you if that's the case. I want to invite you to, um, as I pray tonight, just lay your hands on your own chest as I pray. And, and we'll pray and, and believe that if you're in that difficult situation, God is going to send that right person. If that right person is me, please give me a call. Send me a text. Let me know. I'd love to help you in any way that I can. And, uh, and if, but in the meantime, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. So let's pray. Father, thank you for this night and uh, for this study in Jeremiah. Uh, we pray, God, that you will help us to develop the character traits that we see in the life of Jeremiah, the life of Ebed Melek, and uh, God, that those could be on display in our lives, through our lives. Lord, I pray for those who even now, they place their hands over their chest because they're in a tough situation. They feel like they're in a muddy cistern tonight. God, that, that you will be their peace, that you will be their strength, that you will be their comfort, that you'll send someone, perhaps me, perhaps someone else that they know that can be that Abed Mellon, that can be the Jeremiah in their life to help them through that difficult situation, to see them released from that muddy cistern. God, with your strength, with your wisdom, that you will guide those who will help in, a, in seasons of difficulty and help us to be those people who can and will help and take action. Lord, thank you for being with us, for hearing us as we pray tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Well, let me invite you to our Sunday school. We have live in-person Sunday school class at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. We have a worship service at 10 o'clock. It'll be live in the sanctuary here where I'm at now. It'll also be live streamed at 10 o'clock on Facebook. And then it'll be rebroadcast again about 3 o'clock on our YouTube channel. Uh, we'd love to have you in one of those services. We'll be back Wednesday, next Wednesday night with another study and uh, looking forward to seeing you possibly on Sunday back here again next Wednesday. Have a great night. God bless you.